This is part two of renovating a Stuart 5A twin steam engine, removal of the drain cocks and the top cylinder covers. These drain cocks have to go, I don't like the look of them at all. They're just standard taps that are fitted to 504 boilers or similar, a standard Stuart fitting, and they don't look right on this engine, particularly these at the top as I mentioned in the last episode, there's no point in having two drain cocks at the top, so I'm going to put a plug in place of these. I'm going to remove all of the taps including the ones down the side I'm going to replace them with something that looks a lot better. I still think that I'm going to replace them with a tap type of drain rather than one of these normal taper cocks because they always dribble everywhere. But I will be selecting some that look good. Right so time to take off the two down the side of the cylinders. And both of these are quite badly marked. I think it's because they stick out just a little bit too far. The ones that I'm going to replace them with don't stick out quite so far, so they will be a little bit better protected. As I get the first of the side drain taps out, I'm having a quick look at it. And it's clear to see there's been some sort of an adapter made that doesn't really look very good. I think it could look a little bit prettier than this. And these drain taps are quite large, so they do look a little bit overscaled for the job. Although really this is not a model engine, not really classified as a model, it's a full size small engine for such as a 20 foot boat. This engine under steam will have quite a lot of power. So as I remove the last of the drain taps it's time to have a look at them. The four on the bench are the ones I've just removed from the engine and this is a type I would normally use as a steam valve. Possibly the globe valve derivative of this type of valve will look better but before I make the final decision I'll try both types of valve and see which looks the best. Both of the top cylinder covers are quite rusty so I'm going to remove them and have a look at them, clean them up, paint the middle bit and I will also at some stage be cleaning up the bolts before they go back in. I start off by loosening them with a the big spanner then I just spin them off with this socket. On an engine like this I would prefer studs. Most Stuart 5As that I've seen use bolts like this so it must be like this on the drawing but I just prefer studs that look much more like a proper steam engine. As this engine is so very well made and runs very well too, I think I will use studs. It'll just go that extra mile and make it look like a byproduct of the industrial revolution. Nearly all of the studs are removed now, and once they're removed, I have to get the cylinder cover off. Now sometimes cylinder covers can be well stuck to the cylinder, other times they come off easy. Usually though, inserting a sharp knife between the cylinder and the cylinder cover will loosen the cylinder cover sufficiently for you to lever it off with a small screwdriver. So here we go. What's it going to be? Difficult or easy? Oh, that's a change. The cylinder cover came off very easily and this is very interesting what I'm seeing inside. For those of you who don't know much about steam engines it won't mean a thing. But if you notice how black everything is, that tells me that the engine's been run and it's been run using a steel boiler that's had water treatment in it. There's some water treatment stuff called DM and it puts a heavy coating of tannin, T-A-N-N-I-N, on the metal parts which helps to prevent rust and that's what this black stuff is. I think that tannin is also responsible for preserving these bodies that are found in bogs. As far as I know tannin occurs naturally in peat bogs but as this is outside my range of expertise I'll keep quiet about it because I really do not wish to upset any academics out there. The inside surface of the cylinder cover is entirely covered in this black stuff, which is obviously from some sort of water treatment. Luckily I don't have to clean that off, I'm only cleaning the external part of the cover, and I'm using some scotch Brite for this. It's not heavily pitted, and I just need to get a good key for the paint. I'm cleaning around the outer edge here. What's on screen at the moment is a before and after, these are some commercial plugs that I bought, I think I got them from a plumber's merchant, but they're a little bit rough, they're rough cast, so I put them in the lathe and cleaned them up, and these are going to be used to plug up the holes in the top of the cylinder, and as the polished brass, they should look quite nice against the paint that's going to go on there. And quickly, before you turn off, this is a paintbrush, yes you just saw a paintbrush, and we're going to be doing some painting. This is BR Loco Green and it's locomotive green from the days of British Railways and it's very similar to the original colour of Stuart Models engines. The first thing to do as this tin's been stood on the shelf for a while is give it a thorough stir and then we'll see what it looks like when I start putting it on the engine. 
As per usual, I use a very small brush. It's almost a scale brush for a scale engine. And it really doesn't matter if I get any on the outside edge, because I'll remove that later when the paint's dried. So this is speeded up as usual, as I don't want anybody slipping into a coma, or phoning the Samaritans, or anything similar to that. Uh, no references to mental illness have been told off about that. I must not talk about padded cells, or straight jackets, or anything remotely like that. But probably as the painting gets on with this engine, because it's such a big engine, and will require such a lot of paint, I may slip in the odd reference. So this is one cylinder cover nearly painted. I'm not putting too much paint on, but I really am putting maybe a little bit too much on. If you put too much paint on it will go horrible and crinkly and nasty. It's a case of getting just enough coverage before you move on to the next bit. And after a while, never over brush. But this paint, which of course is Precision Paints, and once again is available from my friends at Blackgates Engineering, www.blackgates.co.uk, worldwide mail order, etc, etc. And before retiring to my padded cell, uh, no, sorry, my room, all that remains to be said is thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.